Hello. So, boys. So this is this lesson is particularly meant for uh, class nine boys A, B, and C, Saint Augustine School. And this is an explanation to the poem after Blenheim by Robert Sauté. All right. So Robert Sauté, when he uh, in this poem, he talks about it's 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 in the form of a ballad. All right. Ballad are, ballads are actually poems that were written with an intention to be sung like it. It was a lyrical lyrical poem which is like uh, which was supposed to be turned into a song but it never did. So anyway when you look at the singers too all right there are certain poems that you might come across that are written by certain uh, certain singers like for example Bob Marley he has written a couple of uh, poems all right which looks very uh, uh, you know, surprising to see it, but then it is actually a lyrical form of poem that is supposed to be turned into a song, but it never did. So in the same way, after Blenheim is also something like a lyrical ballad, okay, which was uh, written down by the poet with an intention to be sung, to be turned into a song, but it never did, and so hence we have this poem here. All right. Now, in this poem, what you see is a portrayal of one of the most famous battles of the 18th century. Winston Churchill's ancestor John Churchill, the Duke of Marlborough, having allied with the Austrians, had led the English army to a great victory over the French and the Bavarians at the Battle of Blenheim in Germany, 1704. So the poem is, uh, is not a direct description of the battle. It is in the form of a conversation between an old farmer and his grandchildren. The reader is given to understand that the scene is set in a former battlefield with a little boy whose name is Peterkin. One day finds something large and round which happens to be a human skull. One of the many found, you know, one of the many that are found in the field close by. This leads Casper, the grandfather, to describe the battle and its outcome. So hence, this is the poem about the battle. And as we have already discussed, as I've already told you in the previous class, the yardstick, how you measure the success rate of a, of a battle is you have to see how many people die. If there are many people who, if there are many people who have fallen in the in the battle, means that the battle was successful. It is ironical to say, to, you know, to say this, but the amount of the number of people who die in the battle or in the war or in the skirmish actually decides whether that war is that bad war or battle was successful or not. Right. I know it is very ironical and very strange to mention this, but that is how how it is actually measured. That is the yardstick to see how successful a certain battle was. So anyway, so here we have when we talk about the poet Robert Sauté, the son of the Draper was born in Bristol and educated at Westminster School. All right, he was poet poet of the Romantic period and was associated with the Lake School. He became friendly with Coleridge, William Wordsworth and Charles Lamb. Now because he belonged to the 18th century, all right, 18th century and especially during the Romantic period means that they wrote more about nature, all right. So a poet who belongs to the Romantic period, don't, don't get confused, it does not mean that he was a very romantic man and wrote about love. Oh, but here, the, the usual, the actual romance was with nature. The poet, when he wrote about something, he actually romanticized nature and wrote about it. So maybe this was a kind of a restoration after, after, uh, after a lot of, uh, you know, uh, after a lot of people falling, uh, falling prey to certain pandemics and certain, uh, you know, battles and wars, the great wars that were fought, the skirmishes that were that happened around in the in the world. So to restore that, to restore a man's uh, love for nature, so that is when the romantic period started. Okay, so it is it is said something like you know. Uh, even if we look at it, look in the 21st century. Now, 21st century till last year, we know to, to 2019, we know that 
there was a mad race, you know, a certain industrialization, economy, and this and that. And there was a certain mad race towards like, um, to, towards, towards, you know, we, people didn't actually know where we were heading for. But then there were a lot of compromises. People compromised health, people compromised family values, and there was nothing called values that were left. And there was a lot of uh, pollution around, and people were com okay, compromising a lot of things around them. And I think that had re reached a peak, so it had to stop somewhere. So maybe it was because that with the pandemic that came around in 2020, at the beginning of 2020, March around 2020, that hit in that hit India. Okay, so maybe that was a message to tell the world that we have to slow down. Okay. So, however, so it is said something like it takes a pandemic for people to, uh, to you know, to go to, to see that the, the nature around them are actually so beautiful. So we have to preserve that. So that is when people slowed down, even nature, all right, even nature grew back with full glory. So, and then you can see that uh, that many uh, me, that many studies that uh, the American studies that they have shown they have shown that in the map they are trying to show that the world is growing back now. So it is mainly because people have slowed down, stopped, you know, but the pandemic, uh, the pandemic situation. I think it has done more good than. Of course, there are many people who have died with the. Uh, with the disease and which is uh, which is which is a very um, which is a very sad thing if you look around. But then, uh, what good that it has done is that it has healed the mother planet. So in the same way here, we see that romantic period. Uh, the writers, the poets, actually romanticized nature. All right. So and so here, uh, the poet Sate he developed a taste for literature and produced a number of poems and plays. For more than 50 years, he labored steadily at literature. He was a poet laureate of England for 30 years from 1813 to 1843. All right. So now when we look at the, look at the poem. Now, I'll tell you the summary first, okay? One evening in the fields around Bavaria town Blenheim in South Germany, Casper, Casper is the name of the old man, an aged farmer sat in front of his cottage with his grandchildren, Wilhelmine and Peterkin. They were playing. Peterkin had found a round object which he was rolling. He had found it near the stream. He took it to Casper and asked him, what it was. Casper had found many such while pl plowing his field. He told them it was a soldier's skull who had died in the battlefield during the war. The children, being curious, asked him about the cause of the war. Casper told him that the English had asked the French and the future generation would call it a great victory. Death was a natural outcome of war. This is something that I told you earlier. There are casualties of war. People who die in the war are called casualties of war. And the number of people who die become the measuring yard for the success rate of the particular battle. So it was a part of war. Children do not like war. But the grandfather cannot give any logical reason for the great victory. Okay? Of course, who likes violence? We don't like violence. So in this case, um, a person who does not believe that war is necessary is known as a pacifist, okay? A pacifist, a person who detests the concept of war. Because what is war actually, if you look into, a, if you look at, a, if you look at it from a, uh, from a, uh, you know, Lehman's point of view, you will obviously say that war disrupts, that war will destroy, war breaks down, war tears people around, you know, and they will lose family, they will lose their loved ones. So that is what war does. But when you look at history, you will see that history is proof that every war that is fought actually starts with a very small reason. And that reason being one man's, one man, Okay, one man's greed, 
okay and one man's ego so here because of one man there are many people who have to suffer so this is the summary of the book now in the next class i will read out the lines and i will give you an explanation thank you so much for listening